This podcast is brought to you by Knowledge at Wharton. Please visit knowledge.wharton.upenn.edu for more information. The U.S. presidential race has reached a critical point. The Republicans have a confirmed nominee in John McCain. As for the Democrats, Hillary Clinton has bounced back, while Barack Obama retains a marginal lead in terms of delegates. How the presidential race evolves will be shaped in part by the increasingly worrisome state of the U.S. economy. Though it has not yet gone through two consecutive quarters of negative growth, the common definition of a recession, signs of a slowdown are evident everywhere. Meanwhile, consumer prices are rising, oil has crossed $103 a barrel, and gold is nudging $1,000 an ounce, suggesting that the economy could be entering a phase of 1970s-style stagflation. Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke, however, told Congress last week that he doesn't anticipate stagflation, and he continues to indicate his willingness to keep cutting interest rates. What lies ahead for the U.S. and world economy and stock markets? What is the right strategy for investors in this environment? Knowledge of Wharton discussed these questions and more with finance professor Jeremy Siegel, author of The Future for Investors. Professor Siegel, thanks very much for joining us today. Happy to be here. Given all that's going on in the primary elections, what do you think uh, a President uh, Clinton or Obama or McCain would mean for uh, the U.S. economy? Right. Uh, well, certainly had some exciting uh, primaries. Uh, last night, Hillary came back and uh, you know could be a factor. Uh, if Democrats beat themselves up, that might uh, improve the chances of the Republicans uh, a bit. Um, I, a lot of people talk about what kind of policies, and um, uh, I, I think that uh, whoever is uh, president or whatever party, that uh, the question of uh, taxes is going to necessarily come up first. And the reason for this is under current law, uh, all the Bush tax cuts will expire in 2011. Um, and uh, that means that if nothing's done, we go back to the Clinton uh, uh, way of, uh, of, of taxation, which is a major uh, factor. And, of course, what is also very important is the fact that no matter whether McCain or a Democrat wins, uh, as long as Congress remains Democratic, and that is considered over uh, uh, 90% now on the odds makers, uh, uh, they will draft the legislation. And uh, even if McCain uh, vetoes it, says, that I don't want the, these uh, rates to increase, it will automatically go up anyway. So they're going to be wrestling about taxes uh, first. Health care, which everyone talks about, probably will have to take uh, you know second fiddle to that. Anything about homeowners, I think that's going to be done during this year, the last year of the Bush administration, although all the presidential candidates are, are really talking about that issue now. I think that uh, really any legislation that might come out of it will come out of it this year. But I think the first priority really is going to be uh, taxes, and uh, uh, the, the battle will be uh, fought on that front. Okay. It, many have been saying that we're entering this period of 1970s style stagflation. Do you agree with that assessment? No, n- not at all. Uh, uh, 1970s, uh, we got inflation up to 14%, uh, interest rates up to uh, uh, almost 20 percent. I mean, these uh, we are certainly moving to slightly higher inflation rates, but nothing like the 1970s. So we want to call it a tiny little touch of stagflation. I, I, I would tend to agree with that because we have a soft economy with some rising prices. But we have to realize we're not going to be in that situation there. I mean, I, I look for inflation, you know, topping out at most uh, uh, at maybe five, five and a half, and that's with oil uh, prices there. Uh, on the core rate of inflation, I think we won't go above 3% on that. Okay. Uh, Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke has indicated that he's willing to keep on cutting interest rates. Do you agree with that that tact? Well, you know, I've been a big fan of of Bernanke uh, through his two years. Uh, I am a little bit disturbed recently because I don't think he is acknowledging the inflationary threats. Now, I just said I don't think inflation is going to get as bad as the 1970s, but, but, and, I, and I agree there. But we have had a tremendous rise in commodity prices. We've had a tremendous fall in the dollar. Imported costs are going up. Uh, there's even a possibility of a revaluation of Chinese currency as, as a result of this. So raise import prices. I think 
Uh, I, I, I worry about the international community losing faith in Bernanke's anti-inflation credentials. And um, that is not good. So I, I, I think uh, I, he, we're, we're going to get a 50 basis point reduction in rates on March 18th, the next FOMC meeting. But I would like him to say at that point we're signaling an end of the cuts to see how much they're going to work. Because otherwise, an open-ended cuts all going down, I think, could uh, revive inflationary expectations and just make it harder for Bernanke uh, down the road uh, to stabilize the economy. You mentioned the rising commodity prices. What impact will those have on the U.S. and world markets? Well, I, I, you, you know, the uh, if the dollar continues to sink downward, and that, of course, is is partly the confidence uh, in Bernanke's uh, policy, that will raise these imported prices, particularly for energy uh, uh, and also all sorts of other materials. I'm I'm particularly concerned uh, that that China may do a, a revaluation of the yuan because their inflation, because they've pegged their currency or, or sliding their currency slowly against the dollar, has has reached a nine-year high. There's pressure in China to 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 revalue to lower uh, prices, and that would just jump up prices of everything we import from China. Uh, so the the falling dollar uh, does have uh, potentially uh, inflationary consequences. Uh, here in the U.S., although it will, you know, it will improve our trade balance. Uh, on uh, when we take all the positives and negatives, uh, we don't want the dollar to keep on going down. That will not be good. And how does the falling dollar affect uh, sort of the European business market? Well, I mean, that makes it a little harder for the Europeans to compete because the the, the U.S. manufacturers now become more competitive, and they are a little bit comp uh, complaining now the euro has gone over $1.50. Uh, you know, can we compete? The interesting thing is that Europe has been able to compete, even with a strong euro. On average, their trade balance is, is pretty uh, near balance, while ours is still very much uh, in deficit, although improving. Um uh, the, the world out there is very, very competitive. Uh, a falling dollar does help our competitiveness, but I think the downside of higher import prices uh, is something very seriously to be considered. Okay. Well, meanwhile, the manufacturing um, sector seems to be contracting. What does this mean for the economy in general? Well, w the manufacturing sector has been contracting for uh, 30 years now. <laughs> We've lost uh, 50 to 55 percent of manufacturing jobs over the last three decades. So this is something that is continuing. Uh, it is happening in all the developed countries of the world, uh, as, you know, as well as the United States. Uh, and it's irreversible. It has to do with the, the patterns of global trade and wages. And if it isn't China's, it's going to be India. If it's not India, it's going to be Indonesia. It's going to be Vietnam and then maybe even Africa. So uh, we have to learn how to be a service economy. We have to learn uh, about uh, using intellectual capital and, and, and using our, our strengths, and, 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 and that is not going to be, except for some specialty items, which we will manufacture, require high technical expertise. In general, manufacturing uh, jobs will, will continue to be lost. Okay. Uh, well, the, the employment report should yeah. be out this Friday. Yeah, that's a very, very important report. Uh, we just got uh, this morning uh, something called the ADP report, uh, Automatic Data Processing Report, which gives you a little preview, and that showed a loss of jobs. Um, the expectation of Wall Street is for a gain of maybe 20,000. That's very low, but we did have a surprise loss last month. Um, with the, uh, It could very well be a loss. This is an important one. If we're going to have a recession, uh, you got to have a loss of payroll jobs. And by the way, 20,000, 30,000 is usually not enough to bring a recession. You need 100 to 200,000. You need it for several months. We haven't had that yet. We are still skirting the recession, just just barely at this particular uh, juncture. Um, but I would the employment report coming out on Friday is very important. Uh, I also look at jobless claims, which come out every Thursday. They have been ratcheting upward again, not quite into recession levels, but close to recession levels. Um, uh, you know, I, you know, we're going to have a recession, as people know. I, I think we're going to skirt it, uh, but just barely. But we're certainly having a slowdown. Um, whether it's technically a recession or not, uh, you know, is is perhaps uh, secondary. What about the threat of prolonged inflation? Is that is that well? That is, uh, you know, that is uh, a, th a threat if we have a continually falling dollar and commodity prices mm -hmm. um, uh, and uh, continue to rise. I mean, I have been concerned 
that despite the tremendous slowdown in the U.S. economy, which is usually uh, coupled with a slowdown of commodity prices, we have not seen it. Now, it is true that emerging markets have still been strong. Europe has been slowed down, but not a lot. But nonetheless, the fact that oil and all these commodity prices are so strong in face of declining economy uh, is, is even more evidence that the Fed and Bernanke must uh, you know, take that into cognizance. We're going to have fiscal stimulus uh, with the, uh, the rebates starting at the end of the second quarter and into the third quarter. This is going to boost spending. Um, uh, you know, that is another boost to commodity prices. If we, if we don't get some sign that the Fed is going to stop, keep on lowering rates, I'm afraid that will move into inflationary expectations. And the Fed, even the Fed claims, we don't want inflationary expectations to get out of hand. That's one of the hardest things to solve in the economy. So, you know, we're not going back to the stagflation of the 70s. That was mistakes that were made way worse than anything that we face today. Mm -hmm. But the fact that uh, we have to nip inflation in the bud, we cannot let those inflationary expectations get anchored. I think that that's a top priority of, uh, of the uh, Bernanke Fed. Okay. Well, um, Bernanke also spoke yesterday about um, providing relief to right. homeowners who are facing dis uh, foreclosure. Uh, do you agree with his approach of having banks write down loans? Well, I, I, I prefer – we're already seeing all sorts of accommodations. Um, I, I rather the private market do it. I mean, if, if, if the government or the Fed wants to provide a few blueprints that might be suggested, that's fine. But we're getting the service, uh, mortgage service industry move in and, and making deals. Everyone has a, a particular thing. Some are the interest rates. Some might be forgiveness of, of, uh, of a certain amount of principal. Uh, remember, a lot of these mortgages are selling in the open market at 50 cents on the dollar. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, if, if, we, if, you, if, a, if a bank could actually... Uh, say 10 or 20 percent will forgive, uh, and they actually then get the, uh, the, the, the loan, they're going to be making a huge profit on this. So in a way, the incentive is there for them to do it. I don't think we need legislation. I don't think we need governmental action. I think the private sector can handle this and is beginning to handle this now. Okay. Uh, you've written in the past that when the U.S. and Europe are in trouble, emerging economies such as China and India uh, could come to the rescue. Do you think that's the case? Well, I think they're much, you know, uh, the U.S. is not the only engine of the economy. It's an important engine of the world economy, but it's not the only engine of the world economy. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're about 20% of world GDP at the present time. That, that's going to be shrinking, and that's much less than it was 30 years ago when we were one-third of world uh, GDP. So, uh, you know, in, in essence, um, uh, you know, it used to be said the U.S. sneezes and the rest of the world, uh, you know, has a cold. I don't think that happens anymore. Uh, that being said, um, if there is a significant slowdown in the U.S. and a recession, I, it's almost impossible that India and China will not be affected by that. I mean, there's just too many goods that are being sent over here. But will this necessarily trigger, a, you know, a worldwide recession? No, not necessarily. I mean, there's a huge middle classes, certainly in India and even in, in, in China. And the truth of the matter is that because China ha is providing a lot of goods uh, that that if if uh, income goes down, <laughs> uh, those uh, cheaper China goods are going to be in demand. So my feeling is is, you know, China might go from uh, eight to ten percent growth down to four to five percent growth, uh, but but no recession as we define it here in in the United States. So given all that's going on, what do you think investors should be doing? Well, in right now, um, uh, uh, my feeling short run. Uh, I, I've, I've turned cautious on the stock market. Um, I think there could be some more downward adjustment until Bernanke uh, makes a stand and, and the international community begins to say we are going to be fighting in inflation. Um, we could see short run another 5 or even 10 percent decline in, in the market. I consider that maximum, 10 percent downside risk. If we should have that, I think it could be the buying opportunity of the decade for investors because long term I'm bullish and long term I think valuations are still are very attractive. Short term still going to be a little rocky I think until the inflation uh, situation gets clarified um, but long term I think it, it's very very strong. So anyone who has their stock position long term they're going to be fine. If you have a little cash 
You might be deciding to put some of that to work uh, in the next couple of weeks. As stock prices decline, you might be getting uh, some, some very good bargains. Well, thank you very much for speaking with us today. Thank you, Steve. For more information, please visit knowledge.wharton.upenn.edu. Thank you.